All right, I'm gonna show you how we can create this wizard. And all it's gonna do is it's just going to output the results of the form fields. So what I'm hoping that this tutorial is going to be able to do for you is show you how you can create these different form fields, add some custom styling to them, and do something with the output. So whatever you might wanna do with that output is completely up to you. In this case, I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So we are just having it print to our terminal. All right, so let's start writing this. Let's create a new directory called wizard. And in here, let's go ahead and do a go mod init for a wizard tutorial. And then I'll open up a main.go and then we'll just do the basic uh, implementation of the t.model model interface. So to do that, we need our init, update, and view functions. Let's just create a uh, new data type, like a model, and we'll just make that an empty struct. Let's go ahead and implement init or model. And here we're just gonna do init, and this returns a t.model command, and we can just return nil. And then we'll do one for update, and then for this one, it takes a message and it returns a t.model and a t.command. And here I'm just gonna return m common nil. Let's do the view. So we'll do it model view, and then this one returns a string. But for this one, let's return uh, just hello world is fine. Let's do our main method. And this is where we're going to start up our program. For the sake of debugging, let's use the log to file in case we need to do any prints or anything like that. And I don't think I've shown you how to do that already in any existing tutorials. So we'll do that. So t.log to file and we'll get a debug.log is the file that it's going to output to and then just a prefix, which I'm just going to leave that as debug. And then I'll do an if error does not equal nil check. And then because we've got that open, let's go ahead and defer the file closing and let's start up our bubble T program. So our program, we're going to create a new T program, new program, and then we're going to put our model. So we need to have basically just a model in here. And then let's say that we want to use the alt screen. So we'll do with alt screen. Let's do our, let's run it. Let's start it up. So then we'll do uh, is p.run. Since the last time that we created a tutorial, it's actually been updated to run instead of start. And then here I'll just output the error if there is an error. All right, so that's the basics. Let me actually do a quick change to our updates so that we can actually quit the application. Otherwise it's just gonna like exist forever and hang there. So let's do a little switch statement. So we'll do it based on the type of the message. So we'll do message equal to message. I can't type uh, message dot type. And then we'll do a uh, case for T dot key message. And then we'll do a switch on the message dot string, which is just the exact string representation of, of what we see. I think this is pretty much the easiest to work with, honestly. You can also have uh, key binds that you check for, but I'll probably just show that. I'll show that maybe in the next tutorial because both are both work fine and they we don't we don't recommend one over the other. So we're gonna switch over the value of the message dot string so that we can just do a direct uh, direct comparison here. So I'm gonna make it so that control C is how we quit. And when that gets hit, we're going to return m comma t dot quit. Let's spend that, do a little go run because we've now added some dependencies there with bubble T and then let's try running it. Perfect, so that's what we want. And if I hit control C, it'll bring us back. So that is the first part. It's just outlining the t.model interface and implementing that with one of our models. All right, let's make this model look a little bit more like a little questionnaire. Make a questions array, so an array of strings, a width and a height. And let's create a constructor for it. So we'll say new, and then we'll get in a string of questions. And this is going to return a pointer to a model. And then we'll just return a model with uh, questions. Oops, questions, there you go. Perfect. And then what we'll do here in our update, we will get the switch here for when it is a t.window size message. And 
So basically that uh, window size message gets called or like gets sent to our application on startup and on window resize. So you're only gonna get this message once, which is why we're storing the width and the height that we get given in the model. So that basically every single time that we're creating a new or like displaying a new question, we can, we can set the width and the height more accurately. So in this one, we'll do m.width is equal to message.width and then do the same thing for height. And then what we should do is we'll just do a little check here. So we'll say like, if the width is equal to zero, then we'll say that it's loading because that means that it hasn't received that yet. So we don't want it to render anything. And then once it has received the window size message, you can say loaded, something like that. Let's change this logout fatal to just return the error instead of trying to format it. That, and then let's create our model here now. So we'll do, we'll just do M is equal to new, and that's gonna take a list of questions. So let's create that questions array. We're gonna do this and we'll do, uh, what is your, what is your name? And then let's do another one for what is your favorite editor. And maybe a third that's gonna be probably a long form question, which is what is your favorite quote? Perfect. And then here we can call, we'll put the questions in there and then we'll move this to be M. Perfect. So now we've actually made it look a little bit more like a questionnaire. All right, let's check out what that looks like right now. Okay, so it just loaded. It didn't take very long to get that message back. So let's make more changes to it. Let's add an answer field because obviously right now we're just doing random outputs. So let's go back to our NeoVim and let's add a text input field to our model. So with that, because it's a text input field, we're only going to be able to do short answer questions, but we'll fix that later. So for now, let's add answer field and then we have to initialize that. So we'll say uh, answer field is equal to a text input dot new. Here, let's say uh, answer field is equal to answer field. And then let's also add it to our view. So we'll actually use lipgloss.join vertical, which is a great way to manage your layouts in the terminal is you can just do either join it vertical or join horizontal and it will like join your different components or aka strings uh, together. So it's a great way to manage uh, how you wanna lay things out and go ahead and do that, except I meant to do vertical, not horizontal. And then we'll do lipgloss.center, perfect. And then we gotta do m.questions. And I also just realized we don't have a current index uh, to keep track of what question we're on. So I'll have to add that to our model as well. And then m.answerField.view. So we'll call the view on the text input for our current, uh, for the text input.model. Uh, but then I also said I need an index that is going to be an int. Perfect. Actually, I'll just put that up here. There you go. And then uh, what is my linter thing? I could not import. Okay, yeah, we're good, we're good. So maybe for now, I think it's okay. We'll just leave the favorite quote in there and then we'll fix that later. So let's do a go run. Uh, oh, right, we gotta do go mod tidy first. We can just clean it up, grab the text input and all the other dependencies and then do go run. Okay, what is your name? And as you can see, we can't type anything and the layout kind of looks bad. It's working, but at what cost? You know what I mean? Now, because this looks terrible, let's add some styling so that it looks nice and we feel a little bit more motivated and like we're getting somewhere. So we'll add the styling and then we'll add the interactivity. So first part, styling. Let's go to the top here. Oh, I think I need to, let me just reopen that file so it can figure out that I actually did clean up the imports, but let's create a struct that has all of our styles in it. And here we'll just have, let's have a border color. Border color, which is going to be a type lip gloss dot color. And then we'll have an input field, which is going to have its own styling. So we'll have a lip gloss dot style as the type for that. And then let's have a function that returns what our default styles are. So we'll just do default styles and this returns a style struct. And then what we're going to do here is let's just create easy enough, a new, new styles. And then what we're going to do is let's set s.border color to be lipgloss.color and we'll just give it a random value, honestly, uh, 36, I guess. And then s.input field, uh, let's make this a new lip gloss style and let's give it a border. So we'll say border foreground 
and we're going to make this the border color that we've just declared. And then let's say that the border style, border style, let's make it just a normal border. That normal border. My head's in the way here. Hold on. There we go. I'll make that a normal border and then let's add some padding to it just to see what that looks like. And let's set the width to like 80, I guess. And then let's also add some placeholder text to our answer field. So we'll do answer fields dot placeholder. And we're gonna make that uh, your answer here. Perfect. And let's also create, oh, I didn't return anything. So here return S, which is our styles. Let's create new styles. So we'll do styles equal to default styles. So it's just gonna initialize it with all our defaults. And then I'll say styles is equal to styles. And I will add that here. There we go. All right, I think we don't have any issues there. I am just gonna clean this up real quick. I don't think we actually applied the styles, so let's fix that. All right, uh, we did not render anything with the styles. So here, let's do m.styles.inputField.render, uh, perfect. And then we're gonna make this m.answerFields.view. This string is gonna get rendered with the styling that we had just declared, in theory. <laughs> All right, perfect, so that looks a lot better. And I don't like the positioning that much. Let's fix that. So we've got the join vertical in there, but what we wanna do is we wanna place it right in the middle of our terminal. So let's use lipgloss.place for that. Crazy stuff, I know, I know. All right, lipgloss.place, which is going to allow us to place it wherever we want. So what we'll do is we'll have our m.width and our m.height, and that's where we're gonna place it. And then we're gonna set it to lipgloss.center and lipgloss.center. So it's centered on, on both sides and then move this like that should be. Um, yes, and then I need a comma here as that is one of the values. There we go, okay. Let's add some interactivity so that I can actually do something with this question. Because we're adding interactivity, all of the work that we're gonna be doing is in the update function. So what we're gonna do here is let's make it so that when we hit enter, it's gonna bring us to the next question. So when, when we hit enter as a key message, then let's increment our index, increment the index, and then set m.answerField to done. All right, and then we have to return the updated model, otherwise it won't do anything. <laughs> so let's do that. And then another thing that we wanna do is let's make it so that we're actually sending the message to our answer field, AKA our text input. So we need to pass that message along in order for any interactivity to happen with that bubbles component. So let's do that. So we basically just need to do that, set a t.command uh, variable and have m.answerField.update set to that. So whatever that returns and we'll have it run that command. And then we also just need to declare that variable. Is it t.command? Nice. That should be all the changes that we need to make, but let's double check. No, so that's not working. So there's a couple things that also need to happen, which is that we need to focus the input field. So we've already set the placeholder up here when we initialize it, but let's say, hey, we wanna focus it right away. It's important, it's important to us. So, so now I can actually type in here and when I hit enter, I mean, that's not really what we want. We'd actually probably rather clear that value, but we'll, we'll fix that, don't worry. But as you can see, it's actually looking pretty functional and we can flip through all the different ones. And 
Also, as you can see, we've now introduced a new bug that we're also gonna have to fix. Let's fix that bug that we just introduced. So I'm gonna add a little helper function down here. That's going to be for bringing us to the next value. So we'll have a model and we'll make it uh, next is just what the function's gonna be called. So here, if we do m dot, we'll do m dot index. So if it's less than the length of m dot questions minus one, okay. Then we'll increment it. So we'll do m dot index plus plus. And then otherwise, we'll just set my spacebar is broken. Okay. We'll set m dot index to zero. So it'll just set it to the beginning. We also need to create a question struct, which I've just created here. So we've got the question and the associated answer for that question. And then what we're going to do is in our update, we're going to set our current. Let's go ahead and do that in, in here. Let's make a variable for the current. So current is equal to, we'll make it a pointer so that we can manipulate it if we need to. And we'll make it for the current question, which is going to be m.question at the current index. One problem is that we actually still have our questions defined as an array of strings, but it should be an array of questions now. Let's change this to be a question, uh, an array of questions, yes. Let's do a function for a new question. And this is going to take in a question string and it's going to return a question. I think we can actually just get it to return a normal one and we'll just return a question with that. There we go. And then of course the default value for the for str for string is empty string. So that will work. And Yes, and then here we need to do something about this. So this is going to be an array of questions now. So we'll do a little, little, little bit of refactoring here. Current declared but not used, that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a current dot answer. We'll set that to the current value and that has to happen before we switch the current index. There we go. And we should clear it. So before we clear it, let's do m.answer field dot set value and we'll just set it to empty. So we'll clear it after each one. Let's see what that looks like. Um, oh, right, I haven't fixed that yet. So we gotta do a new question for each of these. So I just used a little macro action to quickly replace all of that. And I do believe only got a tiny bit of problems here. Cannot use m.questions. questions, a string. Oh, so here we got to change this. I'm not questions dot index. That would be dot question. There we go. Because now it's it's no longer a string. It's now an instruct with a question field. So let's run that and see what that looks like. Right. So I can still interact with it. Editor NeoVim. Favorite quote. There. And now it's just kind of looping. It's not really doing anything with the answers that we're giving it. And if we want, actually as a good practice for just getting familiar with bubble tea and how you could check these things. What we could do is log the question. Let's do a log.print. We'll do a little printlin. Sure, sure, sure. And actually let's do printf. And then we can do question and then have that be the question and then the new answer. And that will be current dot question and current dot answer. And we'll just, we'll just see, cause then that way uh, we can check the debug.log file after. So we'll go ahead and go run that. And now I'll say bash bunny is my name, favorite editor, NeoVim, favorite quote, yes. <laughs> and now because we switched back, I got to double check. It might've cleared the answer, but let's just take a look. All right. So it looks like it is registering each of our questions and answers, which is nice. That is what we want. Let's fix it a little bit though, because we do want to be able to have long form and short form questions. And that adds a little bit of complexity because the text input and text area bubbles. So a lot of our bubbles don't actually implement the t.model interface, which is something we are thinking about in the back end on whether we want to change that. But because they don't implement the t.model interface, we have to do a little bit of a workaround to get the functionality that we want to be able to swap between long and short questions while having basically all of them be considered a question. We're gonna have a type input. 
which is going to be an interface. And this is pretty much going to be a wrapper for both text area and text input so that we can swap them in and out so that each question will have either a long form or a short form answer. So I'm actually going to leave it as a blank interface for a second here because I want to show you how we know what to implement for the interface. We've got our question here. We've got all of the other functionality for our model, our main model. What I'll do here is I'll create a new function that will return a question, but the input type is going to vary because it's going to be a short question. So we're going to do new short question. And you can have question Q string. This I can also just change to Q, but we'll just leave it. We'll make it on all questions. That's what all, that's what tap completes for, right? Right? Cricket noises. Okay. And then here we'll do a new question. Yes, thank you. And then we will pass in the question. And what we're going to modify here is we want to modify the input type which we don't have a field for yet. So this is going to be the input type and it's going to be the interface. Crazy stuff, I know, I know, bear with me. What we're doing here is we're going to assign this to our field and we got to create that field still. So this would be for a new short answer field, which doesn't exist yet, okay? But it will, okay, just hold on. And then we'll return our new question. So we're going to have that for the short question, and then we're going to have something similar for a long question. So a long question, and then here we'll just change the short answer field to a long answer field. Oh, it's confused. Hold on. I have too many re repeating things. Uh, let's make this one new. Okay. That should have fixed most of this. Okay, there we go. So now those are not declared. What we're going to do is we're going to implement these in the input.go new short answer field. I'm just going to like yoink these. Just yoink them. Yoink them, put them in here. Okay. Just so that we remember what we have to create. All right. So these are new functions that we got to write. And what's the main difference between these two things is that one is going to be using the text input bubble. And the other one is going to be using the text area, which is a multi-line input. So what we'll do here is we got to create, let's create a struct, oops, a uh, short answer field. And that's going to be a struct and it's, it's going to have a text input and it's going to obviously be a type uh, text input dot model, text input dot model. Perfect. And then we'll do something similar for the long answer field, which we'll put right here and we'll just change this to long and change this to text area. Okay, all right. So those are the differences between those two things. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna return a new long answer field. And that is pretty straightforward. So we'll just do fields equal to, uh, we'll say text area, text area dot new, TA, we'll change it to TA, text area dot new. And then what we'll do is we'll just return a long answer fields. I'm really struggling to type today. Okay. Don't, don't judge me. Okay. I haven't fixed my LSP. Just ignore me. Okay. Actually don't ignore me. This is a tutorial. Okay. And then we'll put TA in there. So that's our text area. And then we'll pretty much do the same thing for the short answer fields. And we'll just change any long to short. Okay. There we go. And this is going to be a text input text input dot new, and I'm just going to change it to TI makes a little bit more sense. All right. So now we've got these new structs that are wrappers for our different input types. So we've got our short answer field or our long answer field, and we're going to need to call different things from both text area and text input, which thankfully have pretty much all of the same methods, but we're going to have to use input as the wrapper. Let's go to our bottom here. And here we're actually gonna change this new question. So this one's gonna be a new short question. And this one's gonna be a new short question as well. And this one's gonna be a long question. So we'll do a new long question. Oops, did not finish typing there. There we go. So now we're actually using those, that function that we just came up with. And we're gonna have to change some things around here as well. So the answer field is irrelevant now because we're actually, we're not storing that 
in our main model anymore because it'll vary. So let's delete that field from our main model and see what errors it gives us. So now this is where we're going to have to use the, it would basically be the question dot input field. Uh, this one, yeah, so that, that doesn't need to be initialized anymore. Where else do we have errors? Okay, so then this one is going to be current, so current dot input. So the value uh, is undefined because we, this is a, a method that I know exists for both text, text area and text input, but we haven't implemented it in the wrapper. So that's the first thing that we're gonna wanna put in here. So in this interface, we say, okay, we need the value, we need a value function and that returns a string. So now that should get rid of this problem. And then here we need to set the current, this would be current input dot value. We can just do current dot, actually we don't even need to set, we don't need to reset this value. But what we do need to do is have it blur the current input so that you basically, it's like locked. So it's no longer focused and it'll switch its focus to the next input. So we'll do current dot input dot blur which is a command. Okay, so it removes the focus state on the model. When the model is blurred, it cannot receive keyboard input and the cursor will be hidden. Okay, perfect. And that, what is the, sorry, what is the signature on that? It doesn't return anything. So perfect, we can just have the blur in there and it'll, uh, it'll do that. And then don't forget that because this is an interface and we want each of these structs to implement the interface, we're going to have to have a, like wrapper functions on them. So let's, let's do that because we've already got a couple of functions in there and I don't want you to get confused. So, Let's create a funk called value. And this is gonna be super easy to do because all we're doing, short answer field, and all we're doing is actually returning the value that it would be for the text input or text area. So just be dot value. That's all we're doing, it's just a wrapper. And we'll do the same thing here. And we'll make it, and this is gonna be a long answer field. And this will be la dot text area. There we go. All right, so you get the gist of how we're gonna do that. And then same with blur. So I can actually copy this and we'll just make it blur instead of value. Blur. And then blur. Perfect. Oh, we don't need to return anything, so we can just call that. I just hit that by accident. Uh, value of type, oh, that's my bad. There we go. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing for the long answer. So this is again, just to remove the focus from the current field that we've been writing in. All right, great. So now we've got a couple of those implemented and m.answer field is undefined. Yes, that's okay. So what we're gonna do here instead is again, just replace that directly with current.input. And which means, here, let's current.input is now replacing everywhere that we had our answer field before. And this, as you can see, it says, okay, current.input.update is undefined. It type input does not have a function called update, which is totally fine. Let's add it to the interface. So here we'll have, oops, I stopped the spacing there. And then here we'll have a t.message as the response type, and then it will return a t.model and a t.command. All right, perfect. Actually, because we're not implementing the t.model interface here, we're actually just going to make this return an input, which is anything that implements this interface and a t.command. So if you'd like, we can implement that as well. So here is the function signature and let's do func and sa short answer fields update. And that can be a pointer, that's fine. And all we're gonna do here, same thing as before, return a sa dot uh, text input dot update with the message in there. And this is gonna be message. Sorry, we're not quite gonna return that. We're going to do uh, similar to what we would normally do with a wrapper, with a wrapped update when we're using different models, which is we're going to have this command variable and then we're gonna do a dot text input, a dot text input comma command is equal to 
oh, sorry, SA, I meant SA.textInput is equal to that. And then we will return our current model, comma, the command. Which is normally how you would, like this is always how you would kind of pass messages along to the subcomponents and stuff anyway. So hopefully that's a nice little refresher or insight for you, like the simplest possible update. And then this one we will change to long answer field and LA. And then this one, LA. If I wasn't being so lazy, I would do that smarter, but it's fine. Actually, let's do it for this one. So in here, we'll go ahead and replace uh, text, which we'll replace input with area. Perfect. There we go. All right. And now back here, we won't get that anymore. Uh, cannot use value of type. What have I done? Value of type function as t.command. Here, my bad. So we actually do want to return a t.message here because it is a command. It's a t.command, so we got to change the signature a little bit in our interface, and we also need to update both of these blurs. Otherwise, those will not work. So t.message, and then we'll just return this. There we go. And t.message. Perfect. That should be it. All right. And then answer field, again, we're just going to return that with a current, which we don't have defined here. And it will be current.input is what we're going to switch it out for. And here, let's add current. It's equal to m.questions at the current index. m.index. Perfect. And again, it's telling us, hey, by the way, you haven't implemented view yet, which is cool. We can do that. Let me let me just do a quick little separation here, so it's a little bit easier to a little bit more organized. And I left my caps key on. There we go. All right. So let's do a function for up for view. And these because we're not implementing the t dot model interface, you can make them pointers if you want. So here we'll just return a string and it's going to be sa dot dot text input dot view is what we are returning. All right. Clear as mud. Good, good, good. I'm I'm glad. Okay, and here let's change let's change SA to LA. And let's change short answer. Oops change short to long perfect and text area or text input to text area all right perfect so uh, i don't think we added it yeah we haven't added it to our interface which is why that error still exists so there's view and that returns a string so now when i save that it should be fixed okay we got no more diagnostics so it's not yelling at us for anything else which means it should in theory have everything implemented but first, let's double check that this is all working the way that we want it to. So instead of having this log to the file, I mean, the goal of the application anyway is to have it basically be printing your question and answer at the end. So maybe let's just implement that right now. Let's go to our view. And what we'll do here is, so once we've answered all the questions, we want it to output that. So I think we're going to need a new field for that in our main model to let us know that, hey, by the way, we're done answering all the questions. So let's add, we're going to add a, a field called done, which is going to be Boolean. But to do that, let's have our output string and just go over all of the values that are currently in the range of m.questions. And let's do a little bit of a structured output. So we'll just do that and a little sprint def, nothing crazy. And question, answer. And then we'll get that from q.question and q.answer. Perfect. I did not spell this word right. Nice. Nice. Okay. And then m.done is undefined, which is fine. Let's go to our model struct and let's add done, which is a bool. So we'll say that when we are at the last index, then we'll set m is done. So if m.index is equal to the length of m.questions minus one, then m.done is true, all right? And then we don't need that log printing anymore. All right, let's see what this looks like. 
I can't type anything. So that's not a good sign. Let's fix that. Honestly, I was surprised this even runs because I still have this answer field happening up in the new. This one is where I forgot to put in the placeholder and to focus it. So for both of these, I'll want to do a ti.focus. All right. And we also want to probably add a placeholder. So let's make that uh, ti.placeholder is equal to your answer here. All right. And let's also put that in the long answer. And then should work, TM. Uh-oh. Now we can type in it. Yay. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, let's try it. So Bash Bunny, NeoVim. Yes. Okay. And now it's just kind of looping and we can change it and all of that. But we want it to end once we've accomplished what we want it to accomplish, which we're currently not doing. So what we actually want to do here, which we forgot to do, aka me, uh, we got to return the output so that the function actually returns. Isn't that crazy? I know. I know. You're welcome. Keeping those plot twists in there. All right. And let's go run. And now if I do it, it might work. Ashbany, NeoVim, yes. Okay. Very ugly output. Maybe let's add, actually at least add a new line or something like that. So lip gloss dot place. Uh, what we want here, let's 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 add a new line here and then then that's pretty much it. All right, go run. Let's add Bash Bunny. Let's add NeoVim. And yes, as the quote. Yes, this is always a good word, good quote, sure. That is the basics of the wizard. If you'd like, you can check out the source code linked in the description to check it out for yourself. Feel free to ask any questions. Uh, join the Discord, ideally, and ask questions there or ask questions where the code lives. Uh, either one. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a like. If you like this format, you love seeing the tutorials, let us know with some likes and some comments. All right, see you in the next one. Bye.